very blustery day today here on the prairie. Uh, I thought we were going to have one of the proverbial prairie storms where uh, the wind just goes completely berserk, but maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's just by way of apology for if the wind picks up and you can't hear me. Um, one of the things I find that's sort of flawed, I guess, or at least unacceptable to me in terms of Western thinking is its absoluteness. And I've mentioned that Anakantavada and Syadvada have assisted me in dealing with the absoluteness of our way of thinking, our dialectic, our discourse, our entire philosophy. If you look at, again, the three cardinal rules, they essentially set the stage for an absolute and thus, in my opinion, incomplete or boxed-in um, view of the truth. And yet, I don't think solipsism or complete relativism or complete skepticism is the way to go either, in spite of how many people seem to think that I'm a thoroughgoing and dogmatic skeptic. I'm not. <laughs> um, I don't feel like stepping out of any 10th story windows to see what will happen, because uh, I think I know what will happen. Or swallowing poison or things like that. <clears throat> but is that the truth? No. A lot of people say, no, no, truth is you stand in front of a speeding locomotive and watch what happens, there's your truth. I say, well, no. <laughs> That's not the truth. <laughs> that is one tiny aspect of the truth. And it's highly conditional. It's conditional on the ceteris being paribus. <laughs> and if anyone can come up with an example of a time when ceteris is paribus, <laughs> uh, I'd like to see it that doesn't really happen in phenomenal reality. And thus, Western logic is a little bit too much of a thought experiment, if you ask me. It's too much in the ivory tower, whereas Syadvada brings you down to earth. It brings you into the truth exchange. Um, I like Orwell's quote uh, that I keep bringing up, although it's kind of inaccurate, but it sort of deals with what I'm, the point I'm trying to make. Um, it goes like this, it's a famous quote, the past is erased, the erasure is forgotten, the lie becomes the truth, and then becomes a lie again. Now, Orwell was of course talking about political propaganda and doublethink. Um, I would sort of edit that a little bit and say that the falsehood becomes truth and then becomes falsehood again. Um, that's the Western way of thinking. That's the way. That's how the way our science works. We consider certain things to be absolutely true until something comes along um, to challenge that absolutely true assumption, and then we totally change everything and we forget ever having believed otherwise. Now that's kind of a caricature of the way that the Western mind works, but I think on a continuum, I think it's true that. The Western sort of dialectical version of, of epistemology does do that. Um, Syadvada isn't that, in my opinion, different from the Western way of looking at things, but what Syadvada does is at every step along the way, you remind yourself that there's conditions applied to everything. If A, then B. Um, you know, we, we're familiar with material conditionals in, in logic. Uh, but Syadvada sort of applies that to everything. Um, including, one must say, you must apply Syadvada to itself. And you must apply Anakantavada to Syadvada and each one to each other. It's confusing, but again, it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a way of reconciling um, relativity and our need for something tangible. It's conditional. It's a maybe. So every time that we come up with a new discovery, scientifically or logically or something like that, we 
add on the idea of the maybe. Maybe, or in some ways, this is true. And in the ways that it is true, we will enunciate. That way you don't run into the rutted thinking, whereby you, you forget to revisit your axioms, your original premises. Um, as I say, you get crazy things like um, Benatar. Now, he's just a blatant example of that. Uh, but there are plenty of people who make an, uh, a fetish, if you ask me, out of logic and out of dialectic, and that's just what I'm trying to avoid. It's simply a tool. These things are tools. They are useful tools, but they have limitations, which all tools have. Um, but it doesn't mean that the tools don't work, or it doesn't mean that the tools point to absolutely nothing. Um, the truth isn't all or nothing. Um, in spite of what the Western logical mind might think. Um, it leads to that kind of thinking where, whereby you sort of say, well, if we don't accept identity, then nothing works. <laughs> See? <laughs> That's the flaw in our system. Um, so, Syadvada, just... You just, it's sort of an adjunct to Western logic. Some people say it's a, a completely different system of logic. I don't think it is. But I would say that it's an adjunct. It's something that can enable you to use logic effectively and yet not be trapped by it. Trapped by it in the Benatarian sense. Um, where you discover something and you go, Oh my God, the implications of this are horrific, but it's pretty unarguable. <laughs> Uh, well, no, that's not, that's not what I want my thoughts to do for me, thank you very much. Um, I'm in control of the situation, and Siadvada keeps you in control of your access to whatever truths come along. And it enables you to avoid falling into the trap of, as you've seen in many other people, you know, you see people get frustrated, they say, Oh, we've been through all this crap, why are you going back to that? That's kind of rutted thinking as well, because we're going back to that because we only accepted it predicated on certain conditions. We don't accept it absolutely with Syadvad, but with the Western either-or, um, non-contradiction type thing, identity business, um, you do have to, it's, it's, it's a all-or-nothing sort of thing. Um, or at least as compared to a predicated skepticism or a predicated certainty. Um, as your ideas change, you revisit what they were based upon. And you do this constantly. Anyone who seems to think that we can just take a fixed idea and go for it is, in a certain way, your thinking starts to die at that point where you just sort of say, I now have access to the truth, and all that I need to do is apply it. I don't have to keep looking anymore. That, to me, is my version of an error. To stop thinking, to stop questioning. Uh, get back to Nietzsche again. If you want certainty, then believe. If you want knowledge, then inquire. Um, does the search for knowledge ever end? Maybe, um, but it's not as accessible as some people might see, might think that it is. Um, you will, you can acquire knowledge, but only contingent upon what kind of knowledge you're looking for. Um, and again, it goes back to you. You expect something out of the knowledge that you th thus gain by your your thinking, by your consideration of everything. You want to go somewhere with that knowledge. Um, and again, there's another trap that Western logic seems to set for itself and fall into every single time. It sort of says, truth is out there, our, our relationship to it is irrelevant. But then, the second you establish that and you find out a truth, you then act on that truth. But the thing is, you you told yourself before you went after the truth that you weren't going to act on it because this wasn't, that it wasn't about that. You can't be separate from a truth that you yourself are looking for. 
And if you do discover truth, is it possible to not apply it? So you are involved in truth, in epistemology, whether you like it or not. Syadvada implicitly acknowledges that. The truth and your relationship to it, I would almost say, are mutually dependent. More to follow? I guess so. 